and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout, once again, is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Grand Olympic Auditorium here in the city of Angels, Los Angeles, California, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. And the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Robert Bird. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim, weighing in at 225 pounds. From Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania, he brings a professional record of 32 victories with 27 KOs against 13 losses. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Smokin' Bird Cooper. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the emerald green trunks with red and gold trim, weighing in at 207 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Long Beach, California, an outstanding record, 16 and 1, 13 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, Senor Jeremy Williams. Well, with the World Cup uh, being uh, omnipresent in our mind, we take a soccer view. Uh, for Bert Cooper, narrow the field, get in the box, get in that goal box, get right there. For Williams, be goalie like, have a ladder of movement from one side to the other, one touch quickness, hit. Get out. Can I be a sock? Where, where's where's Seamus Mallon when I need him, huh? As long as you don't try to half volley the punch. There you go. <laughs> had to race through those. But had those. I had more time, believe me, I would have sounded just like a soccer analyst. I oh, mean that. Our auto zone keys to victory with a soccer theme this evening. <laughs> We're all talking World Cup, especially after the big win by the U.S. over Colombia. The knockout ratio for these two. 76% for Jeremy Williams. And we have to take that advisedly because he has not faced uh, overall the competition that Burt Cooper has. Very intriguing matchup in a lot of ways. Uh, Burt Cooper very much the grizzled veteran, even though he's only 28. I actually almost made him 30 today. He quickly corrected me when we talked to him earlier. And uh, Jeremy Williams, obviously the youngster. But as you pointed out, Joe, they both need to win here very badly. Cooper, for sure, it's, it's one of his many last chances. A quick left from Williams. Now Cooper is the straight-ahead brawler. Let's see early if he can get inside. And when Cooper's effect was when he's jabbing his way in, and that's what he's attempting to do right now. Good right counter by Williams. And Cooper landed a right hand, and early, it'll be good, interesting to see if the power of Cooper affects Jeremy Williams. Williams, in truth, is a smallish heavyweight. He's not a guy that came up from the light heavyweight division. So the theory is that the bigger punching heavyweights will give him trouble. Call it an early chin test then for Williams? Yeah, and they passed the first one anyway. And there's an example of what I talked about, and what I'm sure Joe Goosen, who is uh, Williams' relatively new trainer, is telling him, hit and get out. Don't stand in there and slug. And you know, when he came into boxing, Jeremy Williams was learning uh, from Kevin Rooney. They developed a very Mike Tyson-like style for him. It created a lot of early knockouts, but it also created a few times when Jeremy Williams was hurt in the fight. Um, Williams has since uh, been involved in a dispute with his uh, manager, Bill Caton, changed trainers, got Joe Goosen in there trying to iron all that out. Ironically, so is Burt Cooper in a hassle with his manager, Rick Parker. Cooper's putting good pressure on him right now. He's trying to cut off the ring like you had mentioned. Trying to corner him. Good hand speed by Williams so far. Tough round to judge. Good counter punches by Williams, but Cooper has gotten there as well. We come to the conclusion of a very even first round in this battle of heavyweights in Los Angeles. Process in round number one, Williams though, effectively moving away from Burt Cooper, and that's going to be the key for him. Side-to-side -side lateral movement. 
He's making Cooper miss his jab by and large. And if Burt can't get that jab in and slow Williams down, ooh, there's a hook that gets her, not a big punch. Interesting. Uh, Williams throwing so many fewer, but landing the same amount. And uh, Williams did counter Burt fairly effectively. The weapon Burt Cooper wants to use, and that's not exactly how he wants to use it, is the left hook. And he wants to get inside and double with it to the body and the head. And not be wild with it. Burt Cooper, as he did against Larry Donald, in truth, looks like an old fighter right now. Now, one punch could turn it around against the Williams, but um, Burt is not moving as well as he really should. And also not able to throw many combinations. His timing is not good. And he did work harder for this fight, Joel. There's no question. He, he, he was sparring with Keith McMurray, uh, who's a, a pretty good heavyweight and cruiserweight, and uh, worked five weeks for this fight, so he worked harder. But, uh, oh, you call McMurray Sir Jabalot? Yeah, that's his nickname. And they used him because they wanted to emulate the style of uh, Jeremy Williams. Well, there's no question what they want Jeremy Williams to be now in life. He's, he's changed his style 180 degrees. When we saw him, and our listeners, or our viewers will remember, um, when we saw Jeremy Williams come up, it was the Mike Tyson kind of style, going in, trying to get knockouts. Now he's come 180 degrees around, and he is a pure boxer. And I've always had the theory with Jeremy Williams that, especially if he was going to fight this way, why not be a cruiserweight at first? Why not win a cruiserweight championship and then move up to the heavyweight division? But Good they point. moved him right to the heavyweight. There's Cooper getting them against the ropes exactly where he wants them. The defense by Williams, and he comes back with his own shot. Counters to the body. Not everything landed there, and now Burt, you see, he's not in a position, condition-wise, where he can keep throwing those shots. Now Williams turns it around on him. Well, it got the crowd interested, didn't it? That might have been a very important sequence for Jeremy Williams in this fight. Confidence-wise? Yeah, because he was able to pick off a lot of what Cooper threw. Cooper trying to bear in once again. What a very interesting sequence midway through that round where Williams stayed on the ropes. against Bert Cooper. Cooper landed a couple of good body shots. However, a lot of what was thrown here, he was able to pick off or duck, even block the body shots. You see that excellent defense, and then ultimately come out of it with his own counter punches. Movement once again for Williams, or will he stand around and continue to trade? Cooper may have gotten a little confidence in the last round in one sense. He was able to counter Williams a little bit better. He, he wasn't so uh, dazzled by the hand speed. And you see the uh, the punches. Cooper throwing more, and uh, while he's landing less, he's not landing uh, a significant amount less, so he's in the hunt here. Williams tried to turn the tables now in the corner. He's got Williams winning by two points, but those are close rounds. And it's ironic that considering he's boxing, uh, Williams only threw 23 jabs in round two and three. Normally, if you're boxing, you throw more. Tough body shot. Couple from Bird Cooper. You know, over the years, in the last few years, I've noticed Bird Cooper, who used to rely a lot on his left hook, is throwing the right more. And I think that's, in a way, it's a mistake because it's, it, it, a lot of his power is in that left hook. Is that a key for Cooper here? Dig to the body, take advantage of the close quarters? Well, that's what he wants to do, and Williams is giving him an opportunity by laying in with him. I don't know that Jeremy Williams wants to do this, although he may feel he can tire Cooper out this way. 
left to the body by Williams. Cooper thought it was low. Well, he talk it over. He complained. Williams could have hit him when he did that. Williams, Cooper dropped his, uh, his hand. The right knocks the mouthpiece right out of Cooper's mouth. That was while Cooper was thinking of throwing a right hand of his own. He got nailed by Williams with the right. Albert Cooper told us this morning he trained a good solid five almost six weeks for this fight as opposed to Larry Donald fight where his eyes his left eye closed up from that constant jab of Larry Donald they had to stop it in the seventh round he said I only trained three weeks for that I just showed up I wasn't myself for that fight and of course that's been a problem with Bert Cooper not with this man though Jeremy Williams Williams deciding to fight on the inside with Cooper now this round. Either on his own recognizance or uh, because Joe Goosey's trainer suggested it. Good right hand from Cooper. And that's why, personally, if I was Williams, I wouldn't do it. You put yourself in a position where Cooper can at least land those shots, even if they don't hurt you. It gives him a chance. fighting cruiserweight you can stand in there and do this all day but not against big heavyweight nice combination by Bert Cooper in close quarters once again and now against the ropes which is also a place for I don't think Williams wants to be even though Cooper's not landing like he should forget about the tactical style of Jeremy Williams at least so far because he only really moved in the first round Cooper on the inside tries, throws his own right, but gets nailed with a right hand by Williams. The mouthpiece of Cooper went out, but you know when you look back at the replay, Joe, I don't know that Cooper got the worst of that deal. He landed his own right also. It looked like he got the best with that second shot. That was the first round I gave to Bert Cooper, and I'll tell you what, Williams is just not moving as much, and so he's giving Cooper a chance to, to get back into this fight. Tactically, it doesn't seem like it makes much sense, does it? The numbers through three. 55 through six. For Williams. And you can see that Cooper is busier, and so his punch numbers are getting close. This, I can't believe they want him to lay on the ropes like this. I mean, granted, he's blocking a lot of those shots, but even so, unless they feel Cooper will punch himself out, and maybe he will. This may be their form of the rope of I, I look in the corner of Williams and I see Joe Goosen not yelling, not getting upset, so this may be part of the plan. And of course, Cooper didn't land very effectively when Williams was there, so like we did like we did with Ali and uh, Foreman, we rushed to judgment when he laid on those ropes. Let's not do it here. And in the past, we've seen damage from Burke Cooper against Holy Field, Moore, and Donald Early, but he didn't have the stamina to finish it off. Reaching the halfway point of round number four. Body shot now from Williams. Cooper looks tired, I gotta tell you. And I think that's part of the deal here. They feel that he will just fold. And I'll tell you, he is starting to look fatigued. Strong, you notice he's not bending at the waist, he's standing straight up, and those punches are arm punches. A lot of leaning. And maybe that's part of what this was all about. While it appeared to be risky strategy, they maybe felt Williams could wear him out this way. Trying to come in with the uppercut. Notice how inactive Cooper is. He landed that good uppercut, but not working on the inside. Look at that, that was a very... Very weak jab by Cooper. And now Williams digging in. Excellent combinations in the inside by Jeremy Williams. Well, the first 90 seconds, decidedly Cooper. The last 90 seconds belonging to Jeremy Williams. Cooper keeps spinning his mouthpiece out. They don't have to allow him to, to put it back when he spits it out by himself. And also they can take a point away if that continues. 
You see the eye swelling up now. Jeremy Williams, his right eye. It's interesting. I wonder if that came from a clash of heads. Yeah, they are doing exactly what I said. Taking a point away from Cooper because the number of times he spit the mouthpiece out. So a strong finish to the round for Jeremy Williams as we head into the corner of Burt Cooper. He extended so much energy early. I know you're throwing them too fast. Pick your shot. Look, Mark, you understand? Like we did on the heavy bag. Oh my, my sir. You understand what I'm saying? Keep it open. Keep it open. Okay. Talk to me. Yeah. Listen Keep it open. Talk to me. Listen to me. What don't, say? Don't, don't. Hold it open. Keep it. Don't let them off the hook. Our next time, start opening up on the inside. Let them have his first 10, 20 seconds. For the last two minutes, man, I want you to go. You Interesting strategy at work here. Here's the inside fighting in which Jeremy Williams, after he let Bert Cooper have his 10 or 20 seconds, which is what Joe Goosen just said, he came back with these shots. You got him if you want him. Got him where we want him. And let me tell you, over in Bert Cooper's corner, good advice given to him. They don't want that first 10 or 20 seconds when Williams lays on the rope to be a lot of quick punches that don't mean anything. They said, pick your shots and make them count. They felt he was really rushing his combinations. Both men getting very good corner work. They're both being told the right thing. The question is, can they execute? The number is through four rounds so far. They're in the fourth. Uh, Williams with uh, landing 30 out of 44, and uh, Cooper landing half that number, even though he threw almost the same amount. So those numbers actually just for round number four as Williams continues to dig to the body with a canal scorecard. Scott Williams now had 39-36, and of course the last one was a two-point round because of the uh, point being deducted. Short chopping right. You see Williams effective on the inside because Cooper is just tired. They wanted to tire him out for this point in the fight. And you know Joe Goosen, who is training Williams worked with Burt Cooper two fights ago and uh, saw Cooper run out of gas against Larry Donald. So I guess he felt that no matter what uh, Burt Cooper's training habits, the same would happen here. And uh, right at this moment, it is. Right now, the 21-year-old Williams beating the 28-year-old Cooper to the punch. But Cooper working from the inside and takes a big right that rocks him. And another right. Here's where the hand speed of Williams will play a role. Now can Williams finish what he started? Well, he needs a little more room. He's a little too close to Bert Cooper, obviously. He wants to explode on the inside with the Big upper guys. Well, Williams is a little tired right yes. now. He, he may have shot his load there. Oh, oh, man. Well, that's Cooper's fault. Cooper looked over. Cooper spit the mouthpiece out, stopped and looked at Williams. Williams was within his rights to throw the punch because there was no stoppage by the referee. And they'll disqualify Bert Cooper if he does that many more times, spits his mouthpiece out. How about the fact, though, Joel, that Cooper just stood there and took that right hand by Williams. Williams just like, it didn't up and face, like it didn't face him. Williams just wound up and nailed him, and it made no impact on Bert Cooper. That was wild. Well, superb round by Jeremy Williams in every sense. Cooper trying to bully his way in once again. But how much is left at the end of round number five? Big round for Jeremy Williams. The most decisive of the fight so far. Make 
to four times to spit that mouthpiece out. You're doing something right to make them spit it out. You can't let up, though, on the inside. That's all right. Here is Jeremy Williams rocking Bert Cooper with an overhand right. There it is. After he had taken a good uppercut from Cooper as Cooper was pulling out. Now, Cooper ends up spitting his mouthpiece out, looks to the referee. He failed with a right. Well, it didn't quite land perfectly. He had it. I think Bert Cooper might have been on his backside. <laughs> Williams landed 74% of his power punches wow. in round number five. Now that is a statistic, folks. We begin round number six. We question the tactics of Williams early. It's paid off over the last couple of rounds, though. It has indeed, and that's why I, I said at the time, while it didn't seem like it would be in his best interest, and Cooper could have landed something uh, very hard, they had it in their mind to tire Bert Cooper out, and it worked. And give Jeremy Williams credit. He took the punches uh, Cooper threw during that uh, period. Big round for Jeremy Williams. Landed in the 70 percentile overall. Doesn't get much better than that. In the 16 wins for Jeremy Williams, 13 have come by way of the knockout. It doesn't appear that little mouse under the right eye of Jeremy Williams is posing any problems for him. taking a little bit of a break in the first half of round number six. Well, Williams using this time to move around, see if he can counter Bert Cooper. Well, he was effective on the inside, Williams, and now he's going to the outside, not throwing too many punches, but making it tough for Cooper to land. few jabs we've seen recently from Bert Cooper. Well, Williams moving a lot in this round. And it's effective movement because he's able to land the jab and some counter punches off it. And you would expect in round seven he would probably go back inside. Each fighter landing a short chopping right. With only 10 seconds left, though, in round number six, Cooper not much of a factor whatsoever, at least over the last three minutes. Last big fight for Burt Cooper, Larry Donald, ended in the middle of round number seven as we get started round number seven here at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. Joel Myers along with Al Bernstein. Williams dominating over the last three rounds. And he has, he has really taken control. You mentioned some of the luminaries at ringside. Uh, Daryl Mitchell, who uh, is the brother of Tyrone Frazier, a boxer we've seen many times here on uh, ESPN, who also uh, plays a recurring role and a great one, I might add, in what is a fine NBC show, John, the John Larroquette Show. I love it. He mans the lunch counter there, and he is a very funny guy. Nice man, too. So when you Oscar, come to L.A. Oscar De La Hoya ringside as well. Yeah. Only the big ones are here tonight. <laughs> That's why you're here, sir. 60% through round number six for Williams. And I'll pass on that last comment, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Brett Cooper is tired, and this might be the round when Williams might go after him. Of course, we don't know if Williams is a little fatigued, too, but it doesn't appear that way. Well, 
We talked about it at the top of the telecast. There's the body shots from Cooper, a crossroads fight for both fighters. See, Cooper Bert, trying to get it going, and Williams trying to make a name for himself after the loss to Donald. Yeah, very important for, for each man, and Williams looks like he's the one rebounding. See, Coop, Cooper looks to the referee, dropped his mouthpiece, and looked again and got nailed. Right-left combination from Williams, who capitalized because the referee had not come into the scene yet as far as Williams was concerned. They may be just getting ready to disqualify Bert Cooper. He may be disqualified. A point he's being deducted. Here's Cooper. Now, the mouthpiece went out. Now, that time it was knocked out by a punch. But still, you have to wait for the next lull in the action before the referee stepped in. Bert Cooper created a lull on his own. They've disqualified Bert Cooper. We saw it repeatedly in the earlier rounds where Bert Cooper, it looked like, wanted to gain a breather by spitting it out. Now, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Ironically, that's the one moment where I think, even though uh, before he had dropped the mouthpiece on his own, that time he got it knocked out. So that might be the one point where uh, where Bert Cooper has uh, maybe an argument about not being disqualified, but he doesn't look to be too he doesn't look to be too distressed about it. And for, for Jeremy Williams, let's not let any of that controversy or that situation diminish the fact that he performed extremely well. He was sharp tonight. Very sharp and performed in a manner that they created a very good game plan for Bert Cooper and it worked. So Jeremy Williams with his 17th win, and let's join Michael Buffer once again. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Referee Robert Bird has called a halt to this bout. The official time, 1 minute, 48 seconds of round number 7. The reason being, after repeated warnings, the protective mouthpiece kept coming out of the mouth of smoking Bird Cooper for the safety of the fighter, not for punishment. The mouthpiece was not fitted properly. The bout is called to a halt. The winner, 148, round number seven, Jeremy Williams. A very impressive performance this evening by Jeremy Williams as he takes care of smoking Bert Cooper. We'll come right back to downtown Los Angeles. From the loss he had to Larry Donald, Jeremy, you had a very good game plan here, working on the inside with Cooper, even though it might have been dangerous to tire him out. Well, you know, uh, we discussed this many times in the dress room and the gym. As you know, I'm preparing with Rafael and Gabriel Ruelas now, who are two of the best fighters in the world, I think. Hey. He's taking lessons from them guys, you know, and uh, my dad counseling me on things I need to do. We came out good in this fight. You know, I wanted to uh, to use my legs and show the people of America that I'm in boxing instead of just that title slugger that I got. I do have a little bit of something in me besides that. And tonight, you mixed the two very effectively. Yeah, well, uh, I knew I wasn't stronger than him. I know I'm not stronger than 90% of the heavyweights out there, but I, I do believe that I'm faster, and, I, and I hopefully I'm a lot smarter than they are. You feel good about rebounding this way? Yeah, this is a tougher Burt Cooper than Larry Donald fought. I can bet you any amount of money on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it must feel good also to know that you put all your skills into effect tonight. Is this the like, Jeremy Williams we're going to see in the future? Like I told you before, I'm a boxer puncher. I had that label as a, as a puncher, but... I do believe, and I want the American public to believe, that I am a, a boxer puncher. Okay. Congratulations. Good win you. for you. Good to be on ESPN again. All right, Jeremy, it's nice to have you back. He gets a big win. Let's go back to Joel Myers at ringside. Okay, Al. So a couple of...